Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this series we're making Snake in Unity. In this video we're going to add sprites to our snake body. Let's begin. So this is our scene. We have the snake that we can move around, food is spawned, and I can go to it and have the snake eat it. When the snake eats, you can see that the body grows, and the body is correctly following the path that the snake took. So right now we want to actually give it a proper visual. So here in the textures folder, I have the snake body sprites. So let's start off by just replacing the white squares with this texture. So here is the snake class. And here we have the handle word movement, which moves the snake, tests if it did eat some food. If so, it increases the size and checks for all the positions. And here is the code that we were using for temporarily displaying our white squares. So we want to replace this with our proper texture. However, we don't want it to constantly be creating and destroying the same sprite. So we want to create it just once and then reuse that same sprite. So let's go up here and let's set up a list to hold our transforms. So we have a list to keep track of all of our snake body transforms. Let's initialize it on our awake. And let's go down here when we are increasing our snake move position list. And when we increase the size, let's create a body visual. So let's make a function for that. Again, in order to grab the sprite for our snake body, let's go into the game assets class and add another field for the snake body sprite. And we use it in here. So in this function, we are creating a new game object, calling it snake body and adding it with the sprite render component and with the correct body sprite. So after we create it, we simply go into our list and add our snake body game object .transform. So we create a new game object and we add it to our list. And up here, when we increase the body size, let's create one. Okay, so let's see if we are creating a new game object every time our snake eats some food. Okay, there's a snake, there's some food, I go to it, and yep, there's the body right there on the corner. Now I eat another one, and now let's pause and check the hierarchy, and yep, there you go, one snake body and another snake body. Okay, so far so good. Now obviously the issue is we don't want our bodies to be spawned on zero zero, but rather correctly placed to follow the snake body, so let's deal with that. So in here we move our snake, we increase the body size, we create the body transform, we validate our snake move position list, and let's comment out this code for now. And here we are updating the position of the snake head, and afterwards let's also update the rest of our body sprites. So let's do a simple cycle on the snake body transform list. And in here we're going to put our body position based on the snake move position list. And we set the snake body dot position to be this new position. Okay, so we are cycling through the entire list and we are setting the position based on the snake move position list, which is what we were using previously to see our temporary white squares. So let's run the code and see if every single body part now correctly follows the snake path. Okay, there's a snake, there's some food, now I go to it, and yep, there you go, that's the snake body, now I go to another one, and yep, we now have three, and they are all following the path correctly, and so is that one. So we now have our snake body correctly following the path of our snake. Now one potential issue we have in here is the sorting order of the sprites. We want each body part to be under the previous one, so when we create them, let's set the sorting order to match their index. So to modify the sorting order, we simply go into the sprite render and modify the sorting order. The layer is already on default as it should be. And we simply set it to minus the list.count. So when we create the first body part, it gets added to the list and then it gets a sorting order of minus one. We have the second one, minus two, and so on and so forth. So let's see. And yep, as you can see, the bodies are now correctly displayed. So you have the head right on top and you can see it when it goes out. Okay, great. Okay, so now let's keep our code organized by creating a class to handle each snake body part. So let's go down here and make a private class snake body part. Let's create a constructor. 
And inside the constructor, let's copy the snake body. Let's receive an int for the body index and use that instead. And here, let's store our transform. And let's also store the current grid position. Now let's make a function to relocate the body. And just like that, we have a very nice class that can handle everything regarding the snake body. So now let's go up here and instead of having a list of transforms, let's have a list of snake body part. On the private void create snake body, we simply add to the list a new snake body part. And instead of this, we have a update snake body part. And we copy this in here, except we are using this list instead. Instead of setting the position directly, we call the set grid position function and we give it the snake move position. Okay, so our code is now much easier to follow since we have a dedicated class to handle each body part. So we go up here, when we increase the snake body, we create a body part which instantiates a new instance of that class and adds it to the list. And then we have a function to update all the body parts and it does so by calling the function which gives it a grid position and then it takes that grid position and moves the transform. So let's run the code and see if everything still works. Okay, there's the snake, there's the food, and yep, it grabbed the food and it spawned a new body part and the body part is following and another one and grab another piece of fruit and it is growing perfectly fine and all the sprites are being correctly instantiated. So there you have it. We took our previous snake body size info and added a visual as well as a simple class to handle it. In the next video, we're going to deal with the rotation of the sprites, including handling corners. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll...